We're driving with iconic photographer Edward Weston to his house in Carmel, California, where he lived and worked. We're meeting up with his grandson, Kim, a fine art photographer who specializes in nude photography. Edward built his home in 1938 and used it as his home base to photograph from and work in his dark room. Come on in. Hi, Kim. Yeah. Welcome to Edward's house. <laughs> it's sacred. Yeah. I mean, really, I am such a, a fan. Fan isn't the right word. I'm, I felt like he was a mentor for right. me as a photographer. And many, many people feel that way. So. And it's great to still have the house, uh, thanks is. to my dad who bought it from my uncle, um, that we still preserve it pretty much how Edward yeah. lived here, even though we've lived here 27 years, my wife and our son, uh, but it's always been in the family. So and it It's was, important to do yeah. that. It's I Mecca to a lot it's of It's Mecca people. and it's <laughs> the, the history and sort of the depth of where photography was yeah. and where it is now, and yeah. it really, it's a And great it's a moment. great contrast to see how simply he lived, you know? Yeah. And he always sort of pushed that in his lifestyle, no matter what it was, but uh, from his photography to how he lived. Built the house, wow. uh, he and Karis moved in. So pretty much how you see it right today is how it was when they lived here. Fantastic. Um, stuff around the house we've collected, um, of course, this desk belonged to my father. Tell me about the desk. Yeah, it was Edward's desk. And it was where he did a lot of his writing. So, you know, the day books, a lot okay. of the articles and stuff um, were written here. Yeah. Sitting right here yeah. by hand or did he Yeah, all by hand. Okay. <clears throat> the only things that were here when Gina and I moved in was this chair and that table. Uh, and so we sort of added stuff. I got the desk from my father. Um, and I just love it. I mean, people uh, come from all over the world and have been inspired by my grandfather's work. And just to actually to sit in the chair, they get goosebumps. I've, I've actually had grown men cry when they go into his darkroom. It meant that much to so sure, many people. Absolutely. It's a piece of living history. You know, it's, it's, our, it's our family. And I mean, you think of a piece of furniture, I mean, it's in books, it's being photographed, uh, it's, it's a But really to see it in yeah. the flesh, I'm going yeah. to have to sit in yeah. the chair, Yeah, you, you have to sit in the chair, <laughs> definitely. Uh, you mentioned the camera earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah, the camera. Uh, that's a Graflex. And when, I've actually had one like this yeah. in my school. We had yeah. this exact camera. Yeah. I and I used that camera when I was a kid. Wow. It's a great camera. This is a 4x5 version. Mm -hmm. um, the one that Edward used in Mexico was a smaller version, 25 uh, by 3 and a half negative. Oh, yeah. And so a lot of the portraits he did, the so famous it's ones. It's pretty small. Yeah, it's pretty small. Yeah, for him. Yes, you know. Um, so a lot of the famous portraits of like up here, Tina, Diego Rivera, a lot of it was shot with this smaller negative. And what he did is he had Neil build him an enlarger. It's the only time Edward had a use for an enlarger. Okay. And, and he would take those two and a half by three and a half negatives and make an eight by 10 negative out of it. That is amazing yeah. to me. So that's the only time he ever used an enlarger. Because his vision was, that eight by ten. Yeah. You know, he never changed that. That was his framing. That was his life. Yeah. You know, and also, of course, he did four by five, which is a similar type of framing. Yeah. Uh, but this camera allowed him to actually see his subject matter when he was photographing. Plus, it. it's much more portable. Yes. Than yes. an eight by ten. Yeah. And you, you can hand hold it. He did a lot of uh -huh. uh, nudes of of uh, Keras with that type of camera. Okay. But the four by five version. Kim, I want to ask you something about, uh, you know, I know he said uh, there were no rules to composition. Right. But nonetheless, he had this uh, uncanny ability to take everyday objects, like we see Pepper number 30, right, right. And, and bring the beauty out. Yeah. The most famous one to me is the toilet in Mexico. Right, right. That is a It's a like, great who image. takes a picture of, of a toilet, toilet, right? And makes yeah. it look beautiful. Yeah. But... Yeah. Okay, so even though he didn't have rules, was there a philosophy? Absolutely. Okay. You know, I think as any artist, they, it, I call it their voice. It's a language. They're speaking. Exactly. Even though it's, it's a, a photographic language. And you 
not, not necessarily train yourself, but he was so precise on how he framed something. Okay. You know, it, it was pleasing to him. I mean, and he was, he was a master at composition. Yeah, absolutely. And that was something you gained from working as long as he did, mm -hmm. you know. My Uncle Brett was the same way. He had a vision, a voice in a certain way he saw, different than his father. Uh, and we all do. We all have that voice. And uh, he had that unbelievable ability to make a toilet look like a sculpture. Unbelievable, yeah. right? Or and a pepper. Yeah, or a pepper. Right. You know? Let's go look yeah. at the pepper here. Tell me the story about that. Well, th this is Pepper 30. Yeah. So but Presumably there were 29 before that? Yes, okay. there were. This is 30, so I went up to 37. Okay. Uh, so there's a 1P, a 2P. This just happens to be the one that became the most famous. Yeah. And he ran into a problem with a, with a view camera. The closer you get to your subject matter, your depth of field shrinks. Yeah. And so his camera stopped down to F64. So it wasn't enough to get that pepper all in focus because he was very close to it. So he came up with the idea of making stops for his camera at 240. So basically a pinhole. Whoa. Yeah. And so. So that was F240 yeah. essentially? <laughs> That's a four to six hour exposure. Yeah. So, yeah, set the tripod up, put the pepper, it just so happens this pepper 30 is shot inside of a funnel. And open up the, the shutter and walk away. And was it natural light? All natural light. So the light was shifting, shifting during that time? Yeah, period. during the day. That's why it's so luminous. Oh, that's, it's, yeah. I never have heard that story. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Yeah, it's great. And, and, F240, yeah. six hour yeah. exposure, four to six yeah. hour exposure. Yeah. That's so a lot of those vegetables and, and that, that series were those long exposures. And of course, this he did in, in Carmel at where he had his studio and he would set up his subjects and, you know, they lived in a rickety house like this and a car or truck would go by and shake the house. And then he would have it ruin the exposure over. and start all over. Oh, yeah. that's phenomenal. So this is one end. Um, this was done in the tw 20s, um, and it's a classic of that period. Yeah. The sort of soft focus, very theatrical, uh, very moody. Um, he and Margaret Mather were working at the same time. Um, she's a photographer, also his assistant, and also one of his lovers. Uh, he did some great nudes of Margaret and really sort of jumped out of that pictorial period yeah. with her as a model uh, before he even went to Mexico. And, you know, they sort of contribute uh, his stay in Mexico with all the Diego and everyone as a life changer. But I think he was really starting that even before he left. You know, there's some very beautiful, sharp nudes of Margaret that he did before he left. Uh, this is 227M. How many years are these apart? So this, I'm not sure exactly if this is 1919. This is 1936. So 227 news yeah. later. Yeah. 1936. Yeah. Okay. And this is this is very interesting. When this model, of course, is Karis. Uh -huh. Very very famous nude that my grandfather did. And when Karis was alive, she used to come down to the house, and, and I always loved to have her visit. Because you know she lived here. You know, and she would tell, and she would tell little stories about this. And what she didn't like about it is the bobby pins in the hair. <laughs> I didn't even I see can't even I see yeah. yeah. And Edward was concerned about this shadow. Uh -huh. But if you look at it, the shadow is absolutely important. Because what it does is shrinks, shrinks the image and lengthens her, mm -hmm. the shadow here. And then, of course, the corresponding shadows there. Um, but yeah, that's probably one of his most uh, famous nudes. He was all about form. Yeah, yeah. And um, do I remember, uh, who was it that introduced him to the shells as a form? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> that was actually started the whole Pepper series. Okay. Was the shells. Yeah. And that was uh, Henrietta Shore. Okay. who was a painter and a good friend of Edward's while he was living in L.A. 
um, he would go over and visit her. And so he stopped by one day and she was painting these shells, Nautilus shells. Right. She was making paintings using them as a model. So it's really interesting. Everyone thinks, well, how did Edward come up with this idea? Well, from he, her. From her, you know? And so he asked to borrow them. And he took them home. And so that was done in 1927. He did his first, the first frontal Nautilus, which is 1S. Uh, and that's when he found out that he had to have stops 240. But um, yeah, she. So he was using that same. Yeah, that's what F started. F 240 for that yeah. long, long exposure. exposure. The whole, yeah. So this sort of st launched his whole yeah. everyday object yeah. kind of. Yeah. Uh, and and it came through, you know, what if he never would have gone by Margaret Mather's house? Yeah. You know, what do you, you know, we all, that's what I love about art. We're all influenced, yes. you know, and we take that influence and, and we tweak it. You know, he didn't paint these things, you know, the shells. He photographed them, right? you know. know. You know, we do get influenced. Yeah. And there's we are. nothing wrong with in Absolutely. integrating that yeah. into your own art. Yeah, for sure. I mean, think about it. We wouldn't be able to speak if we weren't influenced. Absolutely. I mean, that's the beginning of our influence is listening to language. 227N here is not actually printed by my father. It was printed by Brett. Okay. Uh, they took 850 of Edward's negatives. This is when Edward was alive, but still suffering from Parkinson's, so he, he couldn't, couldn't print. And Brett printed in that, our dark room, his dark room here, anywhere from seven to 10 of 850 negatives. Took him six months to do. Wow. And so they call those project prints. And so if you see, uh, a, Edward Weston print that's initialed EW, uh -huh. it's usually a project print. Okay. Because he, when Edward did the prints, he signed it full signature. So they weren't considered actual final prints? They were. I mean, Brett would print them in the dark room, which we we're going to go look at, yeah. bring them out to the, his father, and his father would okay it. I see. You know, oh, it needs to be darker here, lighter there, whatever. Yeah. Still, huge controversy about him. Brett had a tendency to print a little bit more gutsy, a little more contrasty, a little more, yeah, a little more zip, yeah. you know. Uh, but still, uh, they were printed while Edward was alive. But let's well, every photographer is going to print yes. differently. Yeah. E and even photographers yeah. change oh, yeah. as you go along. Absolutely. I mean, I, when I develop my stuff, I do it differently yeah. than I did 10 you years ago. You revisit the scene. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm constantly doing that and, and, and improving the print, you know, because it's a living thing. Well, let's take a look at this dark room. <laughs> yeah, let's go to the dark room. Edward greatly influenced me, as I mentioned in the Advancing Your Photography Handbook. In fact, Pick up a copy of it now if you haven't yet. Just touch the eye up there. You know, I bet you enjoyed hearing those stories about Edward Weston. I'm still blown away by F240. But don't go away. We have our next episode inside his darkroom coming up. So hit that subscribe button down there so you won't miss any of our shows. I'd like to give a big thank you to Kim and Gina Weston for inviting us to their home. Be sure to check out his work and his workshops at kimweston.com. We love it when you like us, when you share and leave your comments. Thank you all for coming along on this journey and follow me on Instagram. And until next time, remember to get out and capture your own images of life.